most impressive. The specimens are spreading at an incredible rate. Already they've spread six levels in just a few hours, and they show no sign of stopping. The crew were unable to repel their advance, and in doing so, only added to the specimen's ranks. I, however, remain quite safe. I was able to isolate and inject a sample of inert nanites, which allow me to hide in plain sight, so to speak. And as a result, I have been able to collect an unprecedented level of data. I'm currently observing the final stages of assimilation. The subject's body has, by this point, been fully infested by the nanites, allowing for more invasive surgical procedures, typically a limb. Generally, the dominant is amputated by means of sonic sword and replaced with a prosthesis, which the subject has immediate control over due to the nanite interface. An eye, generally the weaker of the two, is removed from its socket by means of suction. This allows for addition of an ocular implant to augment the subject's visual spectrum, allowing it to observe not only most forms of visual light, but also infrared and ultraviolet radiation. A hole is then drilled in the skull, above the right frontal lobe. A small cylindrical device is then inserted, connecting directly to the brain tissue. I would speculate that this device is key to the subject's connection to the overall hive mind. Its installation into the frontal lobe specifically suggests that it serves to control motor functions. With no control over motor function, I would speculate that the subject's conscious mind exists in something of a dreamlike state, mind and body almost completely separated. It may explain why they look so serene, their minds forever free, untethered from his frail confines, awash in a sea of group consciousness. Thoughts passing freely from one mind to another. <laughs> I'm almost jealous. Almost. <laughs>